the massive Overwatch power creep patch is now live. And this has got huge implications for pretty much every hero in the game. We've got healing output nerfed. We've got damage output nerfed. Some heroes have been like more nerfed than others. And we've also got a curious buff to Arissa. Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're going to break this all down. This is or potentially should be a monumental shift in the way Overwatch is played. So let's get stuck into this. So to begin with, we've got the overarching comments from the developers, and this is what they say. In an environment with less pervasive barriers, some damage heroes have become increasingly lethal. As such, we are now looking to reduce damage outputs accordingly. As a cascading effect, this also introduces a need to reduce healing outputs for some support heroes, as there's less damage being dealt overall. So this is the big change. This patch, on the face of it, could be massive. It could be quite literally the best update the game has ever had. Now, I remember saying this a few updates ago because it looked like the game was going in that direction. This, though, is great because what they're doing is they're trying to dial back how crazy Overwatch was getting. How, like, you would just instantly die. Barriers were just instantly exploding. Tanks were instantly exploding. All of this stuff. These changes actually culminate and should all sort of coalesce together and give us a more strategic, slightly slower game where we've got more options that we can actually react to stuff instead of people just being instantly deleted. However, as you guys are going to watch this gameplay footage in the background, you'll notice there are Widows on each team and they just instantly delete the teams. And uh, yeah, maybe that's because we didn't have proper tanks. We just had a Hog and a Zarya. So Widow could just do whatever she liked. Um, but yeah, Widow is still a powerful hero. You will still get one shot. It isn't some sort of place where, oh, suddenly damage is gone, so everyone's going to survive. No, Overwatch, it's still lethal. There are still lethal characters, and you can still just get one shot depending on what's going on. But yes, this is good for the overall, I guess, health of the game. And what's more interesting is when you look further afield and you look towards potential Overwatch 2 launches, everything that's happening right now in Overwatch is going to carry on in Overwatch 2. That's the balance, right? These changes will still be in the game. So maybe the devs are getting ready, gearing up, to push the game into a direction they want it to go in so they can make further changes down the line to Overwatch 2. Anyway, let's get stuck into the specific hero changes. So there's an overall change to the way armor works. Now, this sounds slightly complicated, so let me just kind of explain this as fast as possible. Beam type damage reduction against armor health pools increased from 20 to 30%. So what this is doing is it means that armor is now 10% more effective against beam type weapons. So this means Symmetra, it means Zarya, uh, it may mean Winston, or I'm not too sure about that, so don't quote me on that, but it definitely means Symmetra and your Zarya. I've got much less damage now against tanks. This means tanks last longer. And of course, this is a pretty hefty nerf to the damage output of Zarya and Symmetra. Anna, biotic rifle. Ammo reduced from 14 to 12, and I don't like this. <laughs> right, I play Anna, right? You guys have seen Anna gameplay footage here in the background. I'm not really a big fan of this. It just feels like it. Oh, I was used to 14, and now we've got 12, and now it just feels like, oh, I'm running out of shots when I don't expect to run out of shots. And it's almost like a muscle memory that I've built up. And we'll get onto muscle memory in a second because the McCree change is just, it is horrible to play McCree right now. But yeah, they've just reduced the healing output of Anna by reducing the amount of shots she's got. And it just doesn't feel great. But you can see why they're doing it. It reduces the overall power of healing in the game, right? Because Anna, well, she's got two less shots, so she has to reload. So she's got more downtime now as opposed to what she had before with 14. Ash, the Viper. Max ammo reduced from 15 to 12. And aim down sights damage reduced from 85 to 80. Ash was mega powerful. She is still mega powerful. Ash and Widow are super, super powerful in the game right now just because barriers are not there. These heroes can just do what they like. Ash can just work around barriers as well, throw a dynamite above barriers and detonate it, but her damage output is massive. So what they're doing here is trying to rein her in, make her a little bit kind of, like, make her less powerful, but she's still going to be really good. I honestly think that Widowmaker, this is a bit controversial, this is, but I think Widowmaker is, like, Ash is the Widowmaker the game should have had. Like, I don't think Overwatch should have had Widow. As crazy as that sounds, because Widow just instantly killing people is like, uh, uh okay, it's a sniper, whatever. Ash, though, is this sort of what I would class as an Overwatch sniper, right? Widow's just been pulled out of Counter-Strike with an AWP, basically. But I don't know. Maybe that's just my opinion there. Widow, uh, you know, I still enjoy playing Widow, and I can understand why they put her in the game. But yeah, interesting stuff. So Ash just does less damage. Batiste, this is a... This is, this is massive. This is like a massive nerf to Batiste. So his biotic launcher, the secondary fire, which is the grenade, 
ammo reduced from 12 to 10. So pretty much like your Anna, you've got two less shots now, which is obviously not great. It's less healing output for Batiste. But this is the one. This is the crazy one, right? Regenerative burst, total healing reduced from 150 to 75. This does half as much healing as it used to do before. This is absolutely trash. This is like just a terrible AoE heal now. You, you just can't heal. You, you, I mean, you've got a little heal, obviously, but it's not a lot. It's half the power it used to be. That is a massive, massive, massive nerf. But they've actually given it a little bit of power in another kind of way because now Batiste receives twice as much healing from regenerative burst. So effectively, Batiste is healing himself to 150, but he's healing everyone else to 75. This is a big nerf, a really big nerf to Batiste. And I think this is going to result in us seeing probably a little bit less Batiste getting played. Junkrat, frag launcher, impact damage reduced from 50 to 40. So total is now one, uh, 130 to 120. Now, this is again to try and reduce the massive spam damage which you probably have been subject to farah and junkrat they're both nerfed in this update they put loads of damage out onto the front line of teams they burn barriers they you know they do tons and tons of damage barriers are weaker so by association their damage has been reduced so i guess give barriers a little bit more of a chance but also so they're not just instantly wiping out teams with tons of damage this, though, is a little bit of a weird change. Like, I, this, if this wasn't in the patch notes, I don't think it would matter, right? It's like, okay, it's 10 damage less. It is pretty, you know, that's pretty chunky. But uh, it's like, ugh. maybe this is Blizzard trying to anticipate Junkrat becoming super meta if they didn't do anything about this. That's why they've done this. McCree, this is the one I really, really don't like. I don't like this change. Um, yes, I'm a McCree player, but I just don't like this. Whenever you mess with the fire rate of a hero, it feels terrible. And what they've done is increase the recovery time from 0 0.42 to 0 0.5. Now, what this means is when you fire with McCree, there is a recovery window before you can fire again. We were used to 0.42. Now, in the past, it used to be different. Then it got changed. It got changed, blah, blah, blah. And then it, it turns out to be 0.42. It's been like that for a while. So we're used to the McCree bang, 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 bang. Now, though, with the increased um, uh, recovery rate, it's more similar to bang, bang. Bang. So if you were used to bang, 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 and now you've got to go to bang, 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 it just doesn't feel great. It's, it, I don't like this. I really don't like these kind of changes. But then again, I'm sure they looked at reducing the damage output of his weapon, and maybe that didn't feel as great. I don't know. But McCree was strong. Again, he's hit scan. This is a whole host of hit scan nerfs. You've got Ash, Widow, McCree. We'll get onto Widow in a second. But they are just doing tons and tons of damage because there's no barriers. And the tanks that are being played are basically not main tanks in the meta. Moira, massive nerfs. All right, let's get into this. So um, this, I believe, is the Moira rework, right? So we've been through a bunch of reworks that have been on the experimental card. This is arguably the third rework and the least crazy because it doesn't have any changes to fade. Now, this is what they've done. Biotic Grasp, healing. Lingering heal reduced from four seconds to two seconds. Total healing down from 65 to 35. Now, that is massive. That's when you, like, you know, you tap somebody with a Moira heal. They have a heal over time effect on them. It has been destroyed. Like, it is down to 35 from 65. That is actually pretty ridiculous. However, it now lasts for two seconds, right? Instead of four. So, oh, that's a, redu a reduction there. Healing per second increase from 65 to 70. So, you've got, like, a little bit of offset there. It's like, okay, you're doing a bit more healing now when you're actually juicing people. You've got less heal over time effect. And then, healing resource consumption rate increased from 11 to 14. So you're actually running out of healing juice faster, right? So that all seems weird. It's like, what the hell? That's like a lot of retuning there of Moira's heal ability. However, then you go to Biotic Grasp, the damage variant of this, so your alternate fire. Now, the angle of attack has been reduced by 37%. This is what was on the experimental card for ever, ever since they've tried these experimental changes for Moira. Now, this... Uh, means it's harder to attach the beam to someone. When you're trying to hit them with it, the soft lock effect, it's it's a little bit more difficult. It's still kind of okay to do it. It's not super hard, but it's more difficult. But here's the thing. Healing resource gain rate increased by 50%. So this is them pretty much saying to you, look, we're going to take a little bit of your healing power away. We're going to make you do a little, a little bit more healing when you're actually healing people instead of the heal over time effect. Um, and we're going to increase the rate your healing runs out of juice, but we're going to rapidly increase the rate you gain energy for the heal so this is going to be more of a moira healing damage damage healing damage healing damage healing which could actually feel better as a, a moira play style but yeah healing output is nerfed for moira that's the big takeaway from this orissa halt radius increase from four to five and projectile speed reduced from 30 to 25 this is them trying to make orissa's halt better now the danger of this is we go back to the roadhog orissa meta 
where we're just going to see Arissa in every game. I'm not sure about this. This, I think, could mean Arissa comes back long term because this is, uh, yeah, you can now more reliably hit people with Holt, and that's where Arissa's power level lies. But remember, Arissa has had her armor nerfed from the previous patch, so she's not as tanky as she was. But this could be the return of the Arissa hog meta. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Farah, the rocket launcher, recovery increase from 075 to 085. This, again, you know, this is messing with the recovery rate. You fire a rocket. This is a, more of a delay now before you can fire the next rocket effectively. It, again, it kind of feels a little bit jarring. It's not as bad as McCree because with McCree, it's a hit scan weapon. You're waiting. You know, you're firing and you expect the damage instantly with this. You're, you're firing a rocket, a projectile into the game space. So it's not as bad, but this is trying to reduce the power level of Farah because Farah is pretty good right now. So mm, this has probably needed this one. Symmetra, Photon Projector, Secondary Fire, Max Damage Reduced from 140 to 120. So think of the armor nerf, right? An extra 10% protection or, or extra 10% damage reduction on beam damage to uh, targets with armor. So this is tank targets. And also she's lost additional damage on her alternate fire. So instead of it doing 140 per fully charged ball, it now does 120. So... A lot of interesting nerfs there for Symmetra, really. I don't know. Like, maybe this is a hero. Like, I don't know. Again, this is probably them trying to anticipate stuff. Like, with Junkrat going, maybe Junkrat becomes super strong right now. So, let's nerf him preemptively. Maybe Sim is going to become super strong. Let's nerf her preemptively. I don't know. This is interesting stuff. Widowmaker. Now, this is a big nerf. But as you guys have been watching in the video footage behind... Widowmaker's been killing everyone, <laughs> all right? And Widowmaker will still kill everyone because I don't think this is enough, as crazy as that sounds. So, general, max ammo increased from 30 to 35 on the Widow's Kiss. So, hey, we've got more ammo. Sounds great, right? However, secondary fire, scoped ammo cost increased from 3 to 5. Now, it's only an extra 2, but that is big. That is actually huge. So, that's going to reduce the amount of overall shots you're going to be able to make with a fully charged Widowmaker shot. Also, scoped shots now have 50% damage fall off from 60 to 85 meters. And as you guys have been seeing in the footage in the background here, that doesn't matter because 60 to 85 meters is actually a really long distance in Overwatch. Um, it means you're just going to get destroyed anywhere in the point on Hanamura. You're going to get destroyed on the first point anywhere you basically are. It, it, they're probably going to need to do more to this. And I think, honestly, that would probably be a good change because no one likes getting instantly killed from literally the other side of the map. It doesn't feel great. So maybe Widowmaker is going to get more nerfs. Ooh, it's a touchy subject. If you're a Widow main, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And finally, we've got Zarya's Particle Cannon. Ammo cost increase from 20 to 25 for the secondary fire, which of course means you're going to fire less of these because it costs five more ammo than it did before. But again, remember, Zarya's beam damage on the primary fire is going to be less effective against targets with armor. So there we go, guys. These are the changes that are live on Overwatch right now. Huge power creep changes, a, like a ton of changes here. The game feels different. You go and play the game if you're a support, you it will feel different, right? It feels a little bit weird, a little bit slower. If you're DPS, again, you've got these little bits of reduction in the damage that you do, especially if you play the hit scan or the heroes we've covered in this video. But it's uh, a brave new world for Overwatch, but it's still wild right now in competitive because nobody plays any kind of main tank, so it's just a mess. So I think a lot of the issues are just getting amplified. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. I've been Salosa. This has been a look at the recent Overwatch experimental patch, which is now live. And yeah, it's their very clear attempt to try and rein in the power creep, which has been affecting the game for a long time. All right, guys, you can follow me on everything, which is at Salosa on Instagram, Twitter, and all of that good stuff. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Toodaloo.